So, tonight's lineup. Um, the thing about this meetup is when you're scaling a company, one of the hardest things to scale is your culture, is how you onboard your employees, um, wh what is your team. And um, so tonight we have three great speakers uh, who are going to help you with this subject. First, Damien, uh, he co-founded uh, Save, uh, and uh, he has now, I don't know where he is, 300 people? 350 persons on, uh, on Save. Uh, when I knew him, there were four guys in, a, in an apartment uh, helping people to repair smartphones. And uh, so great scale in a year, a year and a half. Um, so a lot, of, a lot to do about culture, about how you onboard people. Uh, and so he will share his, exper his experience. Second speaker, Rodolphe. Rodolphe works at Buffer. Uh, some of you might know that, but Buffer is a company that, uh, who has, that have uh, distributed teams all across the world, so people who are working remotely. Uh, of course, it's a challenge when you work away from, from an office to, to get your culture right, so he will share how they do it at, uh, at Buffer. And finally, Sylvain, who works at Algolia. He's the first employee of Algolia, and uh, Algolia has a team split in between Paris and San Francisco, so a lot of challenges here too, and uh, he will share his vision, how they did it, and how it was from uh, the first employee standpoint uh, to, to scale the team. Okay, so first, Damien. Uh, please give a huge round of applause for Damien. And uh, we're very happy to have him tonight. Thank you, thank you very much. That's the remote. All right. Um, who knows, save. That, that's pretty much, actually. Uh, who already broke, broke his phone? One, two. So actually, you are part of the 12% people that break uh, his, his phone every year. Um, that's the major pain we are, uh, we are resolving. And we are resolving this pain through little booths. It's corners that are located in the middle of the alleys in the mall. Uh, it's about 15 to 20 square meters. And we have 110 of this through Europe. Uh, it's mostly in France, it's, uh, it's in UK, it's in Spain, um, it's in Sweden, and in Switzerland. We are actually right now operating uh, those corners through rescuers and not technicians. We want them to understand differently their, their job than just uh, uh, disassemble a phone and reassemble it. So, so we, we build it r a really fat culture at SAVE and, uh, and we really believe that it's, uh, it's a part of our success. Um, just a few data about the company. So we have 350 employees, so it's pretty much for a startup. Um, it's mostly because we are uh, people consuming. What we are selling actually is people's time. It's their knowledge, uh, dissembling and reassembling a smartphone. It's, it's, it's taking time and it's what we're selling actually. It's our product. So that's why we have so much people. And so it's important for us to scale our culture because, uh, because it's, it's the only point about the company. So when you see this, usually people see this. The corners. Um, so the corner, the product, the experience. Um, so when we say uh, we have 110 shops through Europe, people are thinking about the shop, about the furniture, about the contract with the properties. They are, they are thinking about uh, the screwdrivers, the part, the stock, all the operations, all of this. But actually, what count the most at safe and what is our major pain, it's not a pain, but it's uh, what we, what we really have to count for, it's this. It's not the corner, it's the rescuers that are inside the, the corners and they are repairing the, 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 the smartphones. First of all, it's a, it's a pain for us to recruit for the only reason that technicians or rescuers, they don't exist. Um, in 2012, sold 300, uh, 350 million smartphones worldwide. In 2010, three years later, 1.3 billion. So if you just have a curve on the smartphone sales worldwide, it's, it's just exploding. So it just means that all the people that are repairing, that have the knowledge about repairing the smartphones, they don't exist. So we have to train them. So we built a whole academy 
It's called the Save Academy. It's a three-week program on which every every rescuers will actually understand how a, how a smartphone works. And it's not only this. On this academy, we are actually doing three things. The first is to uh, it's to learn how they how to repair a smartphone. The second. We're teaching how to use um, all the company, all the tools, all the, um, all the, all the how, how the company works, uh, who is doing the marketing, who is doing the sales, who is doing the operations, uh, how do we sign the contracts, um, what are all the, um, the, for example, when, we, when you go in a corner at SAVE, um, all our cashier system is an, uh, is an iOS app we developed it ourselves, so we are actually teaching them how to use all our system in turn. And the third thing, we are also providing to them all the culture of the company. Uh, we started this year with 25 employees, and 11 months later, we are 350. Can you imagine uh, the structure of the uh, intern, the company? So, so we, we really have to teach them all the values, everything that count in the company for them not to waste time in, in many other things. And I'm, I'm through, this, uh, through this little talk, I'm, I'm going to, to, to tell you how we build this. So <clears throat> this is our intern baseline. It's what count the most. And actually, when they, when, when a rescuer is coming for the first time uh, at the academy, it's the first sentence that is seen. Um, he's coming inside the room. There are many other people that are going to be trained. And in all the walls, you can see this sentence: "Customer is your only boss." It's so, we, we are we are not um, uh, building a, a Tesla car. Like what we are doing is that we are providing a service to someone, and we can scale many things. We can scale corners. We can sell, scale the rescuers. We can scale many aspects in the company. But at the end, we will still have a rescuer in front of a customer. So that that's really important to understand. So all our rescuers have to understand that the customer is the only value we have. And that's really important. Um, we build it uh, values of the company through the letters of save. So save four letters. Um, we build it four big values that are very important. The first one is ship in fast and keep it simple. Uh, how to, how to say it? Uh, I don't know if you can uh, feel it, but uh, starting a year with 25, 25 employees and r 11 months being at 350 like you you really don't have to waste your time in silly things definitely um, it's it's more than 20% growth rates each month so don't waste your time in doing in doing things that that doesn't need to so you really have to ship fast and keep simple everything we can have huge problems on every every time every kind of issues but you have to, 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 to transform all of those problems on things very simple, simple to, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really an attitude. The A is ambition is not an option. When you come at SAVE, you really have to understand that we will be a worldwide company in three years. So, for example, me uh, and all the rest of the companies, we are all French, and we are trying to do all of the assets of the company in English. We are writing all of those values in English for the only reason that for us, we're not French anymore. We're doing right now something like 95% uh, uh, of our turnover in France, but we don't care about it. Like, we are a worldwide company from scratch, from zero, because we are here to build an empire in three years, in four years, in, in, very few, um, in a very few time. And that's very important. And everyone has to believe it, as strong as I believe it and as strong as I can tell you. It's important to feel this in the company. It's our values. Uh, the V is victory comes as we learn. At SAVE, we have something very huge that you can do a mistake, you can, you can, you can screw up something one time, but never twice, never two times. Um, because you have to learn from, from the error you made. Like, think about it. Um, screwing up something, it's having the immense and the huge opportunity of not doing it another time, a second time. 
It's learning, actually, and you, you learn from your mistakes. That's very important. Well, that's blah, blah, all right? But let me tell you a story. We have Salia. Salia is working not very far from here. She's working at, um, in, in, uh, in our office in Santi, all right? She's an accountant. She's doing all the money transfer, and she's doing the money transfer um, uh, in China for, for buying our parts, all right? Uh, one day, she had to make a very huge money transfer, a real one, like half a million, something like this, to, to buy parts from China. The, she didn't double check if, the, if the, the money transfer was done or not, and it didn't. So what happened? Well, when you work with Chinese, <laughs> you know that no money no part. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> so ne anyone uh, send us the, us the parts, so we couldn't make any sales in the company. So this week, the, the next week, we were, we were supposed to do something like 60,000 60, or 70,000 euro in turnover in one week. We made 200. So I am doing reports every week to our shareholders. And I had to explain why our curve of sales was doing this. And this specific week, we, had to, we, we were missing 400,000 euro. So we, I had to explain this. Can you imagine how painful it was for me? Can you imagine how painful it was for rescuers all of, their, all of our friends? And can you imagine how painful it was for the company? Everyone was saying, okay, they're growing so fast, uh, there is no management in this company, it's horrible, just because of this money transfer. Celia, she stayed in the company. Because I can believe it, that she would never do this mistake again. She learned from this. And I, 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 I saw her every morning. She wanted to hide, really, she wanted to hide. She wanted to get fired, but we didn't. We didn't because it's the in immense opportunity about learning. That's something intense at SAVE. E, excellence is in the details. Well, I believe that what is doing an extraordinary company is many, many details. It's, uh, it's, it's one detail here, one detail there. It's the email you're sending that is ambitious, that is, uh, that is clear, and that is fun. It's the communication that you have. It's the little smile of the rescuer when you go in a safe corner. It's, um, it's the little thanks not that we give to, to all our rescuers, to all our customers uh, at the end of a repair. It's all of those details that are doing, that are making actually safe right now. It's all those details that, are, that is doing that, <coughs> that is making that SAVE is different from any other company that is doing phone repair. Because we have the culture of the excellence, and the culture is excellence is building through all of those details. So we have two things at SAVE. Um, it's the care. So we have two cares. We have one care for our employees, and we have one care for our customers. Um, and it's something very deep uh, at SAVE. For example, we have no marketing department. If it's acquisition of clients, we're calling this, uh, uh, this department growth or acquisition. If it's about uh, working on the service or a catalog of all the repairs we're doing, we're calling it service or catalog. And all the marketing that is actually um, calling the, the, the technician rescuers or all of those aspects is called the care at SAFE. And we believe that if we really want to, to, to provide a great service to our customers and a really great service, uh, the care has to be deeper on the employees. We are doing many, many things for our employees. We are doing an onboarding that is very fat during this uh, three weeks of program, of training, um, during this SAVE Academy. We are offering them food, we are offering them everything. I'm coming one day 
one full day at the SAVE Academy during the program just to tell them where is the company is going, uh, how, did it, how has it been created, et cetera, et cetera. Just, to, just for them to feel about the company, to feel about the customers. Uh, we're organizing party, for example, at the beginning of September. Here, we made a huge party at SAVE. For, for all our employees, it was 300 people. During this party, um, we also invited our investors, or shareholders, or the partners. And, I s and, and we were saying, them, fr saying this to, to all our rescuers. Hey, you are here at a party. We are inviting them, like we're paying all the train tickets, we're paying the hotel, we're paying everything for them, just for them to be here for them to feel that they count in the company and they count maybe more than me because they are not here on stage, they are in front of our customers. I am not anymore. So we really believe it's very strong. And we are building something in long term. <laughs> That's funny because on this picture it's Luca and he's uh, at the end, uh, he's over there. And he has a safe shirt too, today. Um, so we really think that we're building something in the long term and we really believe that if we continue opening corner in the middle of the alleys in the mall to repair iPhone 5 screens, we are dead for the next five years. And that's a good thing because it's not at all what we're going to do. <laughs> we are actually building a service company through all the objects that are coming tomorrow. Um, I told you, this year it's 1.3 billion smartphones that are sold in the world, but we, we aim 2020, and in 2020, there will be 40 billion um, electronical devices, not only smartphones, everyday used. 40 billion. So it means that you guys, in your everyday life, you will, you will use many more, many more devices than just a smartphone. You will use maybe a smartwatch, maybe a fitness tracker, maybe, maybe I don't know, something else. It's not my job to invent all of those products, but it will be my, my job to save it. And it's another thing, it's about the use. I mean, look at you in your everyday life. The use you have on those products is pretty simple. You are using text messages, you are using emails, you are using a Uber on Friday night when you're drunk, you are using all of that kinds of things, but it's not very deep in terms of use. It's not right now your credit cards, it's not the, the, cars of, uh, the keys of your car, it's not a tracker that is uh, opening the door of your garage uh, when, you're, when you're coming at home, for example. It's not all of those. And tomorrow it will be. And we will be here to, to do parameters for you, to help you in hardware, to help you in software, et cetera, et cetera. That's our long-term vision. So we believe that save it's not just a corner, it's not just a smartphone repair. So we are really building an empire. And you know what? We have faith about it. And that's probably what counts the most in the culture. We really believe that we are building an empire here, from Paris, from now. And I'm telling it to you right now, and I'm telling it to, the, uh, to all the rescuers, and that's, that's actually what it is leading us to this success, is that we have faith about it. That was the party in last September. I mean, look at people's eyes. I really think that it's what do, is doing our, our success at SAVE, is that we're all believing that we're doing and we're creating this empire. And the last thing, um, it's about time. Uh, Everything is a matter of time in the companies. I mean, the turnover is a matter of time. Uh, the growth, it's a question of time. Time is the re relativity. So in, in, in the safe culture, um, we don't take time for anything. I mean, for example, when I see companies the, in their recruitment, they are doing like seven, uh, seven uh, interviews for a, uh, for a job. Like, we're not doing this at all. Like, it's, we, do, we do a meeting right now, it's like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's bam, we sign the contract, and the next day you're in, in job, inside the house. Like, there is no time. There is no time because time is running, and everything is a matter of time. When I'm telling you that we are building this empire, we are building this empire through time. So, the last thing that I want to say in, <coughs> in the safe culture, and that we are repeating all the time, is that the time is the only thing that is lasting, that is, that is going away every day, every hour, and you cannot do anything about it, and you, I mean, you cannot change anything about it. 
And the second thing is that it's the only thing you cannot buy. So it's precious. And because it is precious, don't, don't uh, waste your time in anything. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Come on, don't be shy. You can ask questions in French, I guess. <laughs> no questions? Cyril, tu as une question? Yes. Just one question. You have local managers, or are everyone like yeah. acting? Yeah, we do actually. Uh, it's 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 weird as a as a question because you're from Algolia, which uh, of course I don't. I know very well Algolia, and we are doing a um, a job that is completely different. So it's funny. Uh, yeah, we have a whole system of management. Uh, we have, for example, one manager in every corner. Uh, that is like responsible for the operations of the corner. We have one area manager after that is the every area manager has something like 10, 10 corners in charge and after we have one country manager that is managing actually all the sales about the country and we have one head of sales, one COO and then me but I'm not, I, don't, I don't have any management uh, aspects in my job but but that's the whole pyramid that we have uh, to scale, actually, our corners. Of course, we need management, too. Yeah. How, did you, uh, how did you prepare for that, that speed of scale? Uh, for example, uh, you know, how did you handle payroll when you moved from one employee to, to five? The payroll? Well, I mean, that's specific, but how did you, yeah. how did you move that quickly? What kind of preparation did you lay down? Well, uh, really, I, I really think that the biggest asset we have to, to scale at this, at this point, uh, it's our culture. Really, I, I really believe it. Uh, I, I mean, uh, all the letters that we, and all the values that we built from SAVE, it was to help or scale, actually. The S, I mean, think about it. The S, ship it fast and keep it simple. Like, there is no uh, big issues about any problem. There is only a quick solution and we find it. Uh, it's the ambition of the scale. It's uh, the victory about learning something. If you don't learn, you, 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 can't, you can't scale. And the excellence detail, is, it's the same. And uh, actually, we, to answer the, the question, honestly, we, we weren't prepared at all at this, of this scale. Um, but what we do is that we hire people of experience at SAVE a lot. Um, we are uh, a bunch of uh, of young guys uh, in a garage that are that is are building a startup. But uh, each time we have to hire a high position in the company, we prefer hiring people of experience because uh, they know how to deal with uh, with big networks, with big data, with uh, big numbers of point of sales, big people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I really believe that uh, one um, one key moment at Save it was the moment when we when we hire our COO, uh, it's called Cyril Montanari, is big guy in retail. He has 20 years of experience in retail and he scaled everything so fast. What time did he join? Sorry? What time did he join? Uh, he joined in the, in the f at 1st September 2014, so it's like one year and, and two months right now. We had only five shops at the time. And yeah, so he was here from scratch. It's like a co-founder. What is your uh, personal motto? What, what, uh, what is your motivation at first <laughs> that um, gave you to, to arrive here? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, actually, um, I've always been ambitious for for the for the um, for the companies uh, for the company I was creating. Uh, the first time um, I actually started with a shop in Paris. Um, at the time, I was alone, but still, I had um, I was very ambitious. And uh, um, the 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 f the first uh, when when the um, I don't, I don't know the word in English, but there was a painter that was painting the shop uh, before the opening. 
It was in uh, it was uh, the beginning of 2013. I was in my fourth year of of, uh, of uh, in a business school in uh, in a master uh, in finance. And uh, and this uh, this day, I, I told him that uh, he had to make a good price for the painting because in the same year I will open four shops. I didn't, but uh, but still I was ambitious for uh, for the project. Uh, so that's why I I, ha I was helped by many many other people. Um, and about mentoring, uh, I think you have source source of inspiration in 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 many different uh, uh, places, and I really believe that here at the family is a very good source of inspiration. I I, I really believe it helped us. Uh, Usama, Jean, Alice, all those people are really are really inspiring for for um, for us, and uh, and they are helping us to to scale, to grow, and to build our vision. Perhaps I thought it was the, I don't know the name in English, but the obsolescence programming. It's such a true. Definitely, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, we we do, uh, of course, uh, an eco-friendly uh, business. I mean, uh, of course, for the ecology, it's it's way better to repair than just replace. But definitely, it's not um, what our customers are looking for. When when we have a customer that is here to replace his phone screen, he's not thinking about buying a new one anyone anyway. So, so it's not about uh, the fight against the obsolescence programming. It's not it's not the fight against uh, the ecology either. Um, definitely, your customers are not looking for this. And but I believe that every company and at at this scale uh, has a responsibility in in all the the ecology system. So so we we actually take care of uh, all the parts that are recycling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not the ecological point, but perhaps to to fight against uh, or, or to postpone postpone the, the die of the of the foam that rely the the customer to respond because it's. Mm, almost uh, like a sort of love or yeah. something like that. I understand. Uh, to be honest, uh, we were more re uh, responding to a more trivial pain. Uh, it's just that there are people that has smartphones, computers, and everything, and they are using it every day. And sometimes it breaks. Sometimes they have a problem to use it. And we're just here to provide a service for them. And it's not uh, the mission of the manufacturer. It's not the mission of the operator. It's not the mission of the service provider. It's not the mission of the insurance. It's the mission of no one. So when we first uh, meet our, our customers, uh, the only the only um, way for them to get a repair or to get a service was to go in greasy spoons shops or very silly shops that you can find in in popular places uh, in Paris or in other cities. So so there was no one, there was anything. So we were actually more resolving this pain than than having a fight for I don't know what. <laughs> You want to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we want to save the world, yeah. <laughs> we will. Okay, thank you. Salut. Uh, Salut. Je posais une question en français, ça t'embête pas No problem. Ok, ça marche. Um, je crois que tu as une dimension internationale, du moins, enfin, tu développes euh, rapidement l'international. Pour ça, il faut euh, convaincre le Unibail Rodamco de UK, de Dubaï. C'est quoi les clés, justement, pour convaincre ce réseau-là d'aller rapidement et de t'imposer je, je réponds en, France, euh, en français, j'espère que Pauline ne va pas m'engueuler là-bas. Non, je, je réponds en anglais En anglais Ok. Allez, je réponds en français, celle-là, elle est compliquée. <rire> ok. Um, well, it was it was hard for us. Uh, all, all the all the people that you're talking about is properties, landlords, people that own actually the uh, the malls uh, worldwide. Uh, all of those people uh, are hard to convince, and usually they are more signing uh, contracts of locations of big retailers, uh, big restaurants, big chains, uh, Zara, McDonald's, or all of those. So it's pretty hard when you are when you are here. Uh, I mean, three, four people. Uh, uh, around uh, 20 years old and and you have great ambition still but uh, you don't have any shops and you're you're not very structured for that kind of uh, a thing so i really think we got luck uh we find someone 
incredible that is called Thierry Jacquin. He's, um, he's actually the director of specialty leasing at Clépier, which is a very, very fat um, landlord uh, in France. Uh, they own big malls. And we signed with him three shops. Uh, that was Créteil Soleil, Belle Epine, and Val d'Europe. It was the, the it's, it's really big malls, actually. Uh, and he, he let us open actually three shops. I don't know why, really. Uh, and we still don't know why, but we hired him uh, <laughs> to, to be in charge of the development because like signing 110 shops in less than one year, it's pretty painful. Like you have to select the place, etc. You have, you need to network with all of those people. Um, <coughs> But right now, um, what happened is that we are present in uh, the middle of the alleys in the mall, and it's usually uh, rental fees that are more expensive than in regular shops, for the only reason that you are in the middle of the alley, so you, you are more visible. But there are only few brands that are able to do a big amount of turnover in that kind of places because it's small. It's 15 square meters, 20 square meters. I mean, think about all the retailers you have in the malls. Usually it's, it's, uh, it's companies that need space uh, to show products, that need space uh, you know, for people to change their clothes or to, to choose, that need space for cooking. Um, so uh, only few brands are able to, to be sufficient, self-sufficient in, in 15 square meters. And uh, we are. So we are representing a very good opportunity for all of those landlords to, to make all of those places profitable. Uh, so right now it's more all the properties that are calling us uh, than us that we're calling them. But still, there are many deals to do. And we are um, taking this opportunity to grow very fast. Uh, so we're going to end this year with 130 shops. And we are planning to open three, uh, 450 new shops in 2016 uh, and to have more than 500 shops by the end of next year. So we take this opportunity to grow very fast and to, and to develop. OK, thank you. Welcome. OK. Thank you very much for your attention.